We've got a flashing check engine light, so let's shut this off. Well, we got another unhappy Honda here. This is a 2015 Honda Odyssey, and we have a flashing check engine light. So let's plug in the Innova 5610 and see if we can figure this one out. Okay, so we've got the P0301 misfire detected. That's gonna be cylinder one. So we know we have an issue with either spark or fuel delivery or something major mechanical. Suspect is gonna be either an ignition coil or a spark plug. When that check engine light is flashing like that, you definitely need to pull over and stop driving. They were really close to home and just made it home, but I can smell some unburned fuel that's coming out of the exhaust. We'll start out with a visual on this. Pop the hood, take a look at cylinder number one, make sure that that coil looks okay, that there's nothing broken on that or chewed wires. We may need to take a look at that spark plug as well. And if it's fouled, these Hondas are known to have a piston ring issue where they will turn and line up and allow some oil to get into the cylinder and foul those spark plugs. I think there's a TSB for this as well. Let's just pop the hood and take a look. All right, let's pull off this engine cover here first. Cylinder one is back here behind, and it's really not too hard to get to, but we're just gonna reach back there with a 10 millimeter, pull off that ignition coil and see if we can see anything wrong with it. Now this coil right here is to cylinder one, and you can see we just have one 10 millimeter nut here. I'm kind of doing this by feel, but it's not too hard to get back here. And I'm gonna use this 10 millimeter hook and nut grip, which will hopefully help prevent me from dropping that. I'm gonna use an extension though first. And you can see that's why I like the cocaine nut grip. It holds onto that nut and prevents that from falling out. Now we also have our electrical connector. Press the little clip here and undo that. And then let's pull out the coil. Okay, so here's our coil from number one, and it doesn't look broken or anything. That doesn't mean that this isn't bad. So what we're gonna do is a quick test. We're gonna swap this with cylinder number two's coil. That's just the first step to determine if we have a bad coil. So now I'm gonna pull out the coil from cylinder number two, and we'll do the old swap -aroo. All right, there we go. Just press that in, kind of carefully wiggle that off, and then we can pull out the coil from number two. We're gonna mark this with a number two right on the top. Uh, that looks good. Mark this one with a number one, just so that we know where it originally came from and we don't get these mixed up. But now I'm gonna go ahead and put the number one coil on the number two position or number two cylinder, and then we'll put the number two on the number one. And then we'll start it up and see if our misfire followed the coil. If it doesn't, then we'll know that the, the coils are probably both good. I'll still probably put them back so that they're in the original places. Let's try that first and then we'll take it from there. Now we don't need to make this super tight because we're probably gonna be changing that again, but that'll hold it in place. And now we can put number two into cylinder one position. Reconnect our clip right there. Get that 10 millimeter nut started. All right, now let's go clear the codes, start it up, and we'll see if that misfire moves cylinders from one to two or if it stays the same on number one. All right, now we're gonna hit erase. Erase was successful. Now it's gonna rescan. It's actually stored that P0301 is permanent. Well, let's go ahead and restart the engine and see if that will change. We still have a rough running vehicle. Okay, so now we do have the P0301. It was also stored as a permanent code, but now it's also showing as pending in the same exact cylinder. So most likely we do not have an issue with that coil being bad. Uh, you can see again, we got the check engine light flashing. Let's go ahead and just shut the engine off. We're gonna go swap those back, but in the process, I'm also gonna pull out that number one spark plug and see if we can find anything there. <laughs> Okay, and I'm just gonna move this, which was originally number two, back over to number two. All right, we're just gonna grab a spark plug socket here, with a couple short extensions, but a longer handle wrench and see if we can break this one loose. This is probably what's causing our misfire. This may not be the problem, but it could be a symptom. You can see that's definitely oil 
This is oil fouled. So I think we do have an issue with the rings or something going on that's allowing this oil to come up and foul the spark plug. Now there is a TSB. I'll put that up here on the screen and I'll also put a link to that in the description. The TSB unfortunately covers older Hondas with this exact same engine and the exact same issue that we're seeing here. And uh, that technical service bulletin is basically saying that the rings or something allows the oil to seep up past the rings and foul the spark plugs and you end up with a misfire. Because we're seeing that this is fouled with oil, that's definitely oil. Oil. Let's put in the new spark plug and see if that fixes our issue, at least gets rid of the misfire so that they can drive this. And um, I'll, I'll talk to the owner and kind of let him know something that he can maybe look into with Honda and uh, figure out what he wants to do or uh, who knows. We'll put the new one in, put it all back together, clear the codes and see if the misfire stays off and uh, see if we can at least get it sorted out for right now. Went with the same plug here. It's an NGK as well. All right, now this is all pre-gap, so we're just gonna be careful not to bump that as we put that in. All right, we're just gonna feed this down through that same opening carefully. All right. Now let's put the coil back on and put the connector on, and then we'll get that nut started. All right, well, we've got it all back together. We'll put the engine cover back on here in a minute, but I'm gonna go clear the codes and then we'll start it up. Now the permanent code is not gonna go away right away. That's probably gonna take a little bit of time, but I'm gonna see if we can get that to at least clear and then see if that check engine light will at least go out and hopefully this thing will run better. We're gonna connect again and clear the code. Okay, so we've got that pending code, but we do wanna erase that. Let's just hit erase. Erase DTCs, erase was successful. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and start it. Well, it's running a lot smoother. That's good. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it's misfiring anymore. No check engine light. Let's take a look at the scan tool here. We still have the P0301 permanent code. Permanent codes do take a little bit of time on this vehicle to turn off. We'll probably have to do a few drive cycles and at least get all these monitors to complete. But let's put this cover back on and then we'll take it for a test drive. Well, it's looking good, running good, and no check engine lights just yet. So let's drive it around a little bit and see how it does. All right, well, that's it. We just drove this around for a good 15, 20 minutes and no check engine light and no misfires. This thing is running really smooth. And let's just do a quick scan just to double check that we don't have any other pending codes or anything. We'll probably still have the permanent code for cylinder one, which we do, P0301. Now, until we drive around a little bit more, that's not gonna go away because a permanent code, depending on the make or the manufacturer, sometimes you just have to do a few drive cycles on that in order to get that to clear. But for right now, we know that we don't have any check engine lights and nothing pending as well. So we're going to call this fixed for right now as far as the, the issue is gone. I mean, the right way to repair this would, of course, be to take apart the engine, change out the rings, and prevent this from continuing to happen. This van does have 117,000 miles right now. If they do decide to have that looked at or talk to Honda about maybe that TSB and see if that's something that will apply to this van or if, you know, there might even be a class action lawsuit or something like that. Sometimes they'll turn into TSBs and then eventually a recall. They're probably past that possibility with their miles, but uh, you never know. But uh, I'll just make sure that the owner is well informed on the situation, at least my recommendation, so they can uh, decide to do with this van what they want. Now, the owner had a lot of work done, timing belt, and he did say that they did put new spark plugs in about six months ago. And so here we are with a, a misfire due to a fouled plug six months later. Now, that may just happen again. And so I'm just making sure that the owner knows the only thing I did was change out a spark plug in order to get this fixed and back on the road. And of course, we don't have any misfires and it is running really good right now, but this may not be a long-term fix. And so we can somewhat say repair confirmed, but at the same time, you know, the engine still has that issue and the oil will still probably seep past those pistons and cause that to happen. It could also be oil dripping down through the valve guides, but most likely it is the piston issue that this engine is known for and that TSB talks about. So I'll go ahead and again, put that TSB on the screen here for you so you guys can at least see what it is, but uh, I'll try to see if I can get a good link to that in the description for you as well. I hope you liked the video. Please give it a thumbs up and 
and subscribe if you don't mind. That does help me out. I'll get a link in the description where you can pick up this exact same scan tool along with some of the other parts and tools used in the video as well. Thanks so much for watching and good luck.